Neal's stagecoaches helped North Columbus grow. So did the Civil War. Camp Thomas was a recruiting station for the 18th United States Infantry and was located where North Columbus is today. North and west of Camp Thomas was Camp Lew Wallace, that was named for General Lew Wallace, the author of Ben-Hur, but who was also involved in taking repatriated prisoners of war and retraining them for further service in the Union Army. What ends up happening is there's a very high rate of people running off and going AWOL. And he writes about not being happy as the commander of that camp because the men run off into the neighborhood. Another government act would transform this rural area and create the institution that would give the university district its name. In 1862, Congress passed the Morrill Act, which provided for an agricultural and mechanical college in every state of the Union. The trustees of Ohio State were early on looking for a place for Ohio State. They actually looked down around Greenlawn Avenue, they looked in Springfield, Ohio, they were all over. As the story goes, and it doesn't seem to be too made up, it's in the university's own annals, that the uh, early trustees make up their final decision when a, he's usually referred to as a Dutchman, an old German, takes the first swig of water from Mirror Lake and says, ah, it's the best water I've ever had. And, uh, you know, it's like, upon this rock, I will build my university. And then the purchase is concluded because Mirror Lake Lake tasted so sweet. When all my come true. In 1870, the trustees purchased for $117,508 the Neal Farm to create the Ohio Agricultural and Mechanical College, now the Ohio State University. On September 17, 1873, the Ohio State University opens its doors to 25 students, including two women. By 1875, there are enough students on campus that the first dorm is built. In 1878, the university graduates its first class of six students. Mary Frank Morrison becomes the first woman to receive a degree in 1879. In 1893, Orton Hall is built, and it commemorates OSU's first president, Edward Orton. And by 1897, the Ohio State University has more than 1,000 students, and the first OSU-Michigan football game is played. Sorry, folks. Michigan won. The area thrived, and new families settled and built businesses near the exciting new university. All sorts of stores and shops and restaurants and other businesses came along to meet the needs of the people in the university area. They included livery stables for a society that still ran pretty much with horses. Catherine Ramlow was one of the many women who ran businesses serving the growing community. She was a very strong businesswoman. She had a great mind for it. When uh, her first husband died, uh, she only had 50 cents to her name and she swore she'd never be poor and hungry again. Ramlow Hall was built in 1891. The Ramlow building became one of the most prominent early storefronts in North Columbus, housing the bank and the Ramlow Dry Goods Store. The Italian 8 style was more indicative of prestige and the prestige one might have of success in larger cities. The legacy of William Neal will really come through with his children. Robert Neal builds a huge home that is still here today. It's the Kappa Sigma Fraternity House. After the end of the American Civil War, Robert Neal's house comes into the hands of his brother, Henry M. Neal. Henry Neal had been an early enlistee in the Union Army and was a genuine hero, having been wounded badly during the war. When he returned, he laid out the Indianola subdivision across the street from the Ohio State University. He named some of the streets after the campaigns of the American Civil War most notably the Battle of Iuka, where he had been wounded. And they're selling lots for these single-family homes. And they're attracting doctors, they're attracting professionals, they're attracting people that are teaching at Ohio State. And the reason why they're attracting these people is this desire to get their families out of the stink of what cities are at this point in American history. They're industrial, they have bad water, they have poor sanitation. And working in the Neal's favor with all of this are these natural artesian springs that just seem to kind of bubble up wherever anybody digs a hole. 